Hey guys, it's Brie. So today I'm going to show you how to ice dye your fabric. So a lot of cloth pad makers you might notice dye their fabric and it's always the natural fabrics like bamboo velour, uh, even cotton flannel and everything that's got a natural fibre in it. You can't ice dye using this method at least. Uh, fabrics like minky and suede cloth because they are made of polyester. That's not a natural material, it's basically like fine strands of plastic. So they won't dye using this method, it has to be natural fibres as said before, like bamboo velour, organic bamboo velour, bamboo fleece, cotton, plain cotton, flat cotton. They'll, they'll all dye as long as it's a natural fibre. Hemp's another one. So I'm going to show you a method to use, but there are a couple of things I want to say beforehand. Number one is if you don't have a room like this, which can be cut off from the rest of the house, and you have young children, it's really not a good idea to do this because the dyes that you have to use to dye these fabrics come in a powder form, which is highly, highly toxic if they breathe it in, and especially children with asthma, it's going to set their their um, allergies off like crazy. So you've got to make sure that if you've got children, you probably shouldn't do this, and if you have, that you can cut off a room from the house they can't get into. Uh, the other thing is wear old clothes. I haven't abided by this because I've done it so many times that I know what I'm doing and I'm very unlikely to splash myself. Uh, but I will change towards the end, just in case when I'm washing it out it splashes up at me. So yeah, those are a couple of things and I'll just show you the rest. So here is what you're going to need. You're going to need some soda ash. It comes in a powder form like this. You're going to need a spoon and this spoon must just be for dyeing. Uh, this is always kept in my dyeing bowl here so I know it's for dyeing but uh, if you need to write something on it or stick something on it so you know it's just for dyeing then you're going to need your dyes I, I use the Procyon MX dye and I'm using all the colours today just to kind of get a random rainbow effect but this is the I think it says raspberry yeah raspberry this is navy this is lilac this is fire engine red this is lemon yellow and this is aquamarine you're going to need a big bowl, again, just for dyeing. I got this one at Sainsbury's I think, with a straining colander for pound fifty. I think, really cheap. You're going to need a wooden spoon, again, specifically for dyeing. You're going to need a mask, because like I said, these are toxic, so you need to wear protection when you're doing them. You're going to need a jug, and this can just be an ordinary jug, because you're only going to have water in this. And you're going to need some fabric. This is just a fat quarter of bamboo velour. You can see it's organic bamboo velour. It's very soft. You're going to need a pair of rubber gloves. You can use the disposable gloves as well, but I've just to save money got some of these. And I've got another pair of gloves here. This is not a necessary thing. This is just because the ice, when I'm breaking it into this bowl, this bowl is just for the ice. Um, it's very cold. My fingers always get numb, so I just wear a pair of gloves just for that. But you don't have to have that. Obviously, you're going to need a bowl to put your ice in, and then, of course, you're going to need your ice. So this jug can hold about half a litre of water. For every jug of water I put into this bowl, I want to add one teaspoon of the soda ash. So I'm going to go ahead and put as many as I can in here. I'm probably going to use about four for this bowl because a fat quarter is not that much. I can use about a maximum of a metre of fabric when I'm doing this method, but I'm using a small amount today just because I want to show you how it works. So I've put three jugs of water in here actually, that's all I needed. So now I need to add three, um, three teaspoons of soda ash and I'm not wearing my mask at this point, um, but you can if you want to. It's the dye you need to worry about. So three teaspoons of this. One. Two, three, and then you just need to stir it in. Just need to stir it in. If it looks dark, it's because it's a bit stained from other dyes. But it, you can do this with warm or cold water. It doesn't really matter, but warm works best. So when the majority of the soda ash has been absorbed into the water, there's still a couple of bubbles on the bottom. But that's okay you can add your fabric. It's a good idea to wash this fabric in the sink before you do this, but I've never bothered to do that and I've always found it works fine. You'll find that bamboo absorbs and starts to sink in quicker than others, but I'm just gonna use a spoon to press it down in until the full piece of fabric is immersed. And there you go. You can see it's all now in the water. So I'm going to leave that for 15 minutes to soak. Right, well while the fabric's soaking, I'm just going to show you how I've set up the dyeing area. You need a big container like this that comes with a lid that you can clearly secure onto it. This is so that when you take your mask off, you're not going to breathe in those particles. In here, this is an extra thing. You don't really need this, but it really helps, I find, with ice dyeing. This is a cake stand, I think, and it's just plastic. And this is what I'm going to put the fabric on top of. 
Um, I've just put the dies here on a piece of kitchen roll so I can throw any excess dye that might fall off away. But that's just how I've set up the dyeing area. So when your fabric has finished soaking, you just want to pour the excess water away. And then you want to squeeze as much as you can out the fabric. Bamboo absorbs a lot, so it's very hard to get all this out. So once you've done this step, you have a couple of options. You can either leave this fabric on a rack to dry, or you can go straight into the next step. And I'm far too impatient for this to wait for this to dry, so I'm just going to go straight into the next step. So when you're arranging it in here, I find to get the best effects, you have the fluffy side up. You can tell one side's kind of smooth, and the other side's kind of bumpy. So hold it up and just kind of let it drape it in here and then I just scrunch up so that as much of the fabric is kind of pin in a scrunched form and that will help you get really good dyes. Make sure there isn't a big bump anywhere either. So it looks like this. So the next step is to add the eyes to the fabric. I've got my mask on in preparation for the step after this but you basically just want to place it in random parts around the fabric. And I didn't realise I didn't have really that much ice in the freezer, so I would usually do more than what I've got so that I cover the entire fabric in ice, but this should be enough for today. So this is what it looks like. And next it's time to add the dyes. So I'm going to start off with the lightest colour, yellow. Don't screw it. And you only need a tiny bit, because this is very, very concentrated, trust me. It's about that much. You sprinkle it over. I'm just doing a random pattern all over. So it'll fall where it wants to. I'm going to do that with all the colours, just sprinkling them anywhere I want to. So this is what it looks like when you're done. Now I'm just going to grab the lid, put it on. I don't need to put the sides up to put the lid on. You're good to go. Then we can begin cleaning up. And just to show you guys how concentrated the dyes actually are, you can see here there's barely any dye on here. This is the spoon I've just used. I want to run under the tap. can see, actually you can't see very well on the slide, but you can kind of see all the dye colours in there. And now you have to play the waiting game, so I will usually leave that overnight, it's, what time is it, it's about, oh it's 11 o'clock, I'd usually do this dyeing at about 5pm, but you want to let all the ice melt, which can usually take like 4 hours, believe it or not. So let the ice melt and then you want to make sure that it gets at least 8 hours so that the dye has a real chance to soak into the fabric. Then after that I'm going to show you what to do, but you have to wait a long time so just be patient. Okay, so it's day 2 now. Uh, I left it to soak overnight and you can see, hopefully, in there is your ice dye. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this whole thing over to my kitchen sink and I'm going to rinse it out in warm water. You don't want to do hot, but you can do cold. The only thing is your fingers start to go numb, so I would really recommend that you rinse it out with warm water, and you want to rinse it out until there's barely any dye coming out when you squeeze it, so that's what we're going to do now. So if you wondered if um, why I'm not wearing my mask anymore, it's because the dye has now mixed with the water, so it's no longer in its powdered form, and therefore it's no longer as toxic. Um, but you, it will stain your fingers, which is why we're going to wear gloves. It's just not dangerous anymore. Have it on a gentle speed, otherwise it will splash up at you.
So I think the water is running pretty clean now, so I'm going to move on to the next step. So once you rinse that out, you should be able to see your pattern. Cool, huh? So the only thing I'll do now is I'll put it into the washing machine and I'll wash it first with detergent. Never add a fabric softener, especially if you want to use this for making cloth pads. I'll add it first with um, a kind of warm wash with detergent just to get any excess dye out. Then I'll put it in again and I'll do a wash without detergent that time and it should come out pretty clean after that. So that's how you can ice dye. And you can see the bamboo shows up the colours pretty well. Uh, they tend to show more vibrant colours and cotton, cotton velour tends to be a little bit more, uh, well, they're still bright but then a little bit, as, not as vibrant, so to speak. So thanks for watching guys, please subscribe and I will talk to you later. Bye bye.